Welcome to the Clan! This is a show dedicated to helping singers, songwriters, and indie artists like you create leverage in the music business. What is leverage? It's a strategic advantage. It's the power to act effectively. It means they need you as much as you need them, or they need you more than you need them. It means you're coming to the table to a business deal with a reputation, with results, with cash flow, as opposed to potential with your hat in your hand. That's why we called this podcast The Climb, C-L-I-M-B. It means creating leverage in the music business. And the genius that came up with that is my co-host and good friend, Mr. Brent Baxter. Brent's an award-winning hit songwriter with cuts by Alan Jackson, Randy Travis, Lady Antebellum, Joe Nichols, and more. And what I love about Brent is he helps songwriters like you turn pro by revealing how you write like a pro, do business like a pro, and then are on the regular. He sets you up and connects you with the pros. You can find Brent at songwritingpro.com. Once again, that's songwritingpro.com. And I would like to introduce you to my co-host, Johnny Dwinnell. Johnny owns Daredevil Production. They help you find your sound and they help you grow your audience so you can become the artist that everybody loves and so you can get paid. Yeah. Daredevil has worked with multi-platinum artists like Colin Ray, Tracy Lawrence, Ty Herndon, and Andy Griggs, just to name a few. You can find Johnny at DaredevilProduction.com. That's production, singular, no S, and there's no S because there is no other Johnny D. What's going on, brother? Man, it's just a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Leaves are turning, all gold and orangey and all that good stuff. The hogs have a bye week this week, so they don't have to lose. Like. <laughs> I feel like that's what's going on with Green Bay, too. <laughs> Do you feel like the leaves just changed, like, literally the last weekend? I was just out in, like, last weekend, I was out in Bo- uh, Boston. I got out there Thursday night, and it just looked, and this is Boston. It looked super mm. green. And yeah. then when I left on Monday, it looked like they all turned over the weekend. I was like, what the heck's going on? This is quick. And I feel like the same thing's happening in Nashville, too. Right now. Yeah, it happens fast. So we had, uh, when we lived over in Antioch, uh, we had this one tree in our, our front yard that just like for a couple of days was just gorgeous, like gold, like it's on fire. Yeah. And then, then it was ugly again, like a week later. And so. it's Charlie Brown's Christmas tree. <laughs> well, 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 yeah. So things are pretty right now. And my, my, I have an upstairs office, you know, so I have, it's almost like called the tree house. Cause I'm like tree level. So I got a tree right outside the window. So it's really nice right now. Cool. Yeah. Well, today we are gonna, we're going to talk about how, how to really, how to really make money, how to really get your music to the people, how to, to, to make it all happen. And it boils down to, to really, one thing, like all the lessons, all the education, all the know-how, all the past stories, all the different case scenarios, and all this different thing that you can learn aren't going to amount to a hill of beans without this one thing. Mm, and that's I'm what intrigued. we talk about. But before we do that, um, let's take care of a little business. So, hey, we, the Climb Podcast, Brent and I are proud to partner with disc makers who have been supporting indie musicians before indie music was even a thing. When you're ready to make CDs, DVDs, vinyl, which we're doing for the Lonely Highway Boys here shortly, or you're ready to distribute your music and videos with customized USBs, www.discmakers, D-I-S-C, as in Charlie, discmakers, M-A-K-E-R-S, dot com, is the only place that you need to go. And while you're there, click on the Guides and Resources tab and download some of their excellent free guides. They've just revised and expanded their home studio handbook, which has a ton of great advice and information for newbies and for studio veterans. You can find them, again, online at discmakers, D-I-S-C, makers.com, or give them a call at 800-468-9353. Again, that's 800-468-9353. Awesome. And hey, listen, if you haven't joined the Climb community on Facebook, please do so. This is a killer group. There's a lot going on in there. Mm -hmm. Outside of you and me, like just uh, people helping people, right? Mm -hmm. The most wonderful kind of people. That's right. Um, We have uh, people putting up success stories. Yeah, I just saw one uh, a day or so ago at the time of this recording. Somebody uh, climbed up the Music Row chart and just was like, hello. Yeah, check it out and put a screenshot. They're like, yes, and it was totally and People sick. cheering each other on. Awesome. Love yeah. it. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, listen, we're putting lots of information up there, too. Like, if I, I'm on 
different news sites, like industry news sites, like every single day. And when I find stuff that I think is relevant and personal to the people in the climate community, I'll post it in there. So mm-hmm. I can save you a bunch of searching and just find the cool stuff right in the climate community. But uh, you got to ask to be let in, guys. It's a, it is a close a private community, but we let everybody in who asks as long as you got a picture there. Just be good boys and girls or you will be Roadhouse. Um, make sure that you subscribe to this podcast in your podcast player. That way all the new episodes on Tuesday and the mini-sodes on Friday come right automatically down into your podcast player. They're in order and you can consume them as, as often or as little as you want, but they're there and you're not going to miss one. And um, man, take 30 seconds, leave a rating and review. Right, or for Five star rating, preferably. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, that tells other people that we're legit. And then finally, the best compliment you could give us is to share it. Like, if if you get a benefit from this, if if you love what you're hearing, if you think we're on the right track, if you like our brains, then <laughs> uh, tell a friend, spread it around. Right. Mm-hmm. Amen to that. All right. So, so uh, you have intrigued me. There's this one thing that that matters that's going to make a difference. You mentioned something about making money, which has my ears perked up. Yeah, I tell you what, it's going to be, uh, we're going to get a lot of eye rolls on this. Uh Uh-oh, here we go. Um, I've written blogs about this before, and um, people, they get annoyed by it. And the ones who like, feel like this, if this this conversation gets your feathers so ruffled that you feel the need to email me, (laughs) (laughs) I can tell you it's because we're touching us we're, we're we're put pressing on a bruise we're we're we're, we're you know we're, we're touching on a wound there mm-hmm. because um you need to get together the, the so, trick hey, is before we get into that if we send those emails to me those are i probably enjoy reading those <laughs> yeah, just since i don't have to worry about responding to it yeah. anyway yeah back to the show <laughs> so um okay so a couple of weeks like three weeks ago i was out in san diego for um some paid coaching right so for some some facebook ads training trying mm-hmm. to Prove my game, right? Mm-hmm. And they're talking about um, a lot of this was, now I'm a business owner. We've got a nice little crew here. We, we're, we're growing. I've been blessed with being able to grow up in a family where my dad was a business owner. And mm-hmm. so those are the conversations we had around the dinner table every night, you know, it was like managing people and, and cash flow and taxes and, you know, all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of people don't have that, right? They don't have that in their toolbox. And yeah. So there's a lot of people at this uh, at this um, event that are a lot. I I just was equating them with the people in the climate community. They're they're uh, a lot of maybe single moms or single dads. They got a job and they're trying to figure out a way to get out of this forty hour a week job that they hate mm-hmm. and get into doing something that they love. Yeah. And they're trying to set up an ads business, but that's scary, right? Like, wh- when do you make that jump? Like, uh, are their their budgets are tight. Uh, can I really do this? Kind of a lot of the same questions. Yeah. A lot of the same questions, right? I mean, it's ringing yeah. a bell. Like this, my 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 spidey sense was like, bing, 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 bing. I was like, oh my, I got to start taking notes. And this is a podcast right here. And, yeah. um, and what made me think about this was, um, so when you're doing, there's three steps to doing like Facebook ads that we do for our clients that help get them, um, help get them uh, audiences, right? Now, mm-hmm. it, 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 and you can, you know, check me on this. If you're in the client community, you probably already seen the post. We got a show. This is this is going to air on the fifteenth. You said, uh, yeah, Tuesday the thirteenth or Tuesday the thirteenth. So this, the show mm-hmm. will have already gone by. I will have posted results. Uh, we're recording this on the second. Tomorrow's the third. We're going to be in Columbia, Missouri, doing a um, a branded tour kind of thing with with two bar frog artists that we do all the marketing for with Daredevil. <clears throat> and um, I mean, this is a cold market. They've never been into this market. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have a relationship there with the club owner and we have, we're, the crowd is going to be completely built around what we did on Facebook ads, right? Yeah. And so um, I'm going to post like the results on that and that the extrapolate the, uh, export the reports so you can see what we did, who, how we did it, what the video was that we used to attract it. And then I'll give you like, did anybody show up? I mean, might not happen. I don't know. Yeah. But, um, so I'm back to San Diego now. I'm there, and and to putting this thing together, that there's there's a there's three phases: attraction, amplify, and accelerate. Right. Mm-hmm. So attraction is making sure that the creative is right, that the that the ad is is correct, and mm-hmm. that it's compelling, and that it's relevant and personal and speaking to the person. And in fact, Facebook puts a relevant score on your ads that, mm-hmm. and that helps you lower or it decreases or increases the cost because mm-hmm. it's in a, in an auction kind of a thing. <laughs> it also has to do with who you target for your audience. Like, are, you know, are you trying to sell hamburgers in a vegan community? Are you, right. 
Um, so all that part. Then the amplify and the accelerate are really um, – they're less creative. They're more mechanical. They're more like tech knowledge, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Okay. And know how, and so they're like, everybody has questions on amplify and accelerate, but they spent 50% of the time out there. If they spend two days talking about the attraction piece, the very first piece, because they're like the amplify and accelerate stuff that we're going to show you, not going to amount to a hill of beans unless you know how to do this thing here. Right. Unless mm. your, your ad is good, you're reaching, you know who you're supposed to be reaching and, and you've done all this other homework first. So you got to have that music. Yeah. Yeah. You got to have that foundation first. So this, I started attributing this to, and there was a lot of business talk in this um, event as well. Again, because we have lots of people that are just the first time in their lives are going to attempt to venture into their own, be their own business, mm -hmm. which is frightening. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it's mindset. That's, mm -hmm. This is what we're talking about. Mindset is everything. I'm going to give you some examples. Because people are like, oh, I thought you were going to give me the one magic golden formula that's just going to line my pockets with money. Right, give is. me a how-to. Yeah. Give me a checklist. And the, and the how-to yeah. is the mindset. And, and with all the checklists that you're going to get, if you don't have the mindset, then you're just getting in your own way. And I kind of want to give you some examples of this and jump in like whenever you want, Brent. Right. But I started with, I started thinking about this um, when I was putting the, together just the thoughts for this podcast in my head. Like um, I, when, I, when I first, in fourth grade, like I just had started to develop friends and everything like that. And, and, and I was kind of like a big dude. Like I was at the, my class, my school, fourth grade was the highest grade. And then you went to another school. So I'm like at the top of the food chain in <laughs> yeah. my little elementary school. I got my buddies and my parents like hated my friends because they thought, mm -hmm. They figured out early on somehow that these people are going to be criminals and they were right. <laughs> and so they're like, we got to move, you know, and I'm like, yeah. so I'm petrified. So, so I'm just, I'm setting up the story, right? So we moved to another town, like 20 minutes away, Delavan, Wisconsin from Whitewater, Wisconsin. And by the way, all my friends in Whitewater did like end up in prison or still are there. At one okay. Point. They were a mess, but um, I don't know how they picked that out of hat, but they did. Uh, but I was pissed, right? I'm, I'm hostile. Like I can't, mm -hmm. like I'm, I got to leave all my friends. I got to go to this scary new school yeah. and all that comes together with the first day I get on the bus. And what do I run into? A freaking bully. Right, mm. bully, and um, this guy's torturing me, man, uh, all week long. He just—I mean, he's not beating me up or anything, but he just is picking on me and making me just feel inferior, and and mm -hmm. straight up just trying to get over on me like a jerk. Yeah, and I, I go to my dad. Remember, my dad here is a marine, right? <laughs> and I'm I'm losing it. I'm pet I'm terrified. Yeah. So you're hoping maybe your dad can snipe him or something. Yeah, I'm like, you got to take care of this. Yeah, right, yeah. You know, and and he's like. Here's what I'm going to do. Nothing. And the look in my eyes must have been, I remember how I felt still to this day. Mm -hmm. I felt looking at him like I felt abandoned. I felt like you're screwed. This is, I told him straight, this is your job. You're supposed to protect me. He's like, I am. I swear to God, I am protecting you, but I, I'm not going to be here every day. And this is the key. You're going to run into an a-hole like that. Cause my dad's mm -hmm. right? yeah. every single day of your life. And you got to figure out how to deal with it, you know, on your own. Like, and uh, as terrible as that might sound to some of you who are anti-bully and all that, I mean, we can do all the anti-bully campaigns that we want on this planet and the world would be a better place if, if we we're all nicer and we didn't have bullies, but guess what? Never going to happen. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and mm -hmm. my dad was absolutely right. Every single day I run into some other jerk or some other bully who mm -hmm. thinks they're trying to get over on me. And two things, I know exactly how to recognize it right now. Mm -hmm. And instead of me going to this place where, I feel like I was defeated and where I have a pain point, like, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it brings up a, a like PTSD or something like that. Right. Like this is where I lost. And so now I have another bully in my life and I'm not going to be able to do this because the last time this happened, I lost too. I mm -hmm. won. Like I ended up becoming friends with that guy, <laughs> you know, but yeah. I had to figure something out. I had to confront him. I had to do the biggest thing I was scared of. I had to confront him and like, what are you doing? Why are you picking on me? Like, stop it, you know, and, uh -huh. and it just all worked out, um, without a fight or anything like that. Sometimes you got to fight, right? You know, what's mm -hmm. the Kenny Rogers song? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sometimes you got to fight. To be yeah. one. That's right. That's right. Coward of the County. But this, yeah, anyway. Coward of the County. This wasn't the situation here, but I mean, to this day, my mindset when I run into a bully and I've had like big situations where I'm trying to get something done 
And some guy that's like over me, maybe he outranks me in the company I was in or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's just trying to get over on me. Yeah. And instead of me recoiling and, oh, well, here's why this isn't going to work. Bad? You know? Yeah. Yeah. It, and, and this isn't fair. It's not. Mm -hmm. But it's, life's not fair, right? Like, right. I'm figuring out how I'm going to get this guy to perform for me. Mm -hmm. And I get it all the time. I get, to, you know, first thing I'm thinking about is like, hey, the mindset is, you know, is this guy, is, is this a battle worth fighting? Like, is he just being a jerk and I can ignore him? Mm -hmm. Or is he legitimately going to get in my way and, yeah. and stop me from getting to where I need to go? And if that's the case, now I got to deal with it. And how am I going to deal with it? What's the best way, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, but it's a mindset thing. That's what it is. So I was taught early on a different mindset. That's one of the greatest tools my dad ever gave me, mm -hmm. right? Because now I don't panic. I don't create an excuse to lose. I don't, I'm like, okay, well, we, you know, I got to kill him with kindness, Sometimes I got to go over on top of them and have somebody else come down on them mm -hmm. um, and, and serve it up in a certain way. That's not a, he's picking on me and you should help me out. Right, kind of yeah. a whiny situation. I'm just like, Hey man, listen, I'm trying to get this done. This guy over here's providing some challenges. Like, what can we do? Like, I'm just mm -hmm. like, is there something I'm missing? You know? And then I, right. and then it all comes out and that guy's off my butt. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I used to gripe about everything when I was younger, it was when I was in the band, especially I was mm -hmm. Every little stupid thing was just this catastrophic storm that was getting in my way. Yeah. You know, did you ever feel that way? I feel that way sometimes now. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not proud of that. <laughs> but yeah, some days you're just on the wrong side of the bed and everything is especially. No, but I'm talking about like on the regular. Like every time yeah. there would be a speed bump, like we were almost to this one, getting in this one gig, and then something goes sideways and it could be something stupid like, you know, the guys had a family emergency or something like that. Mm -hmm. And now we're not going to get in this club at this time. We're going to have to wait, you know? Yeah. And then you're like, man. And your it's adrenaline like, spiking, you're looking at the negative, you're, yeah. And you're spending a whole lot of energy, right, mm -hmm. worrying about that because you're not, you don't have the right mindset. Right. Right. The, the, everything doesn't wedge everything's not going to balance on this one moment right. whether it's meeting a a record label person or getting that big gig or you know getting money right or mm -hmm. or or how you look at it you know um I, i've understood i've grown to understand in my older age that just like my dad said with the bully you're going to meet one of those every single day of your life yeah and you got to learn how to deal with it you're going to have all these challenges speed bumps potholes car wrecks, you know, like mm -hmm. catastrophic crap is, is going to happen on some level every single day of your life. And yeah. when you accept that and you might have the mindset of that, you're like, okay, well, you we got a little extra to do today. Yeah. And you just go to work. It was like a football player. Do they get upset? Like <laughs> there is still this guy on defense. Dude right. will not go away. Like every play, there's like a defense out here trying to hit the quarterback. What is how about how about like okay how about no, that's a great example? It. <laughs> how, about, how about Matthews, Clay Matthews on the friggin' mm -hmm. Green Bay Packers? Like the first three games, he gets like major fouls for mm -hmm. for what they were calling like abuse on the uh, quarterback, the lay hits and rough in the path. And it was so ridiculously wrong and unfair that it just sparked this viral set of videos from every person that ever liked football that weren't even Packer fans that are like, hold on. And they're like, before they tackle the quarterback, you know, they put a pillow down, a pillow and down. Yeah. rest him down and give him a kiss on the forehead. Like, you okay? <laughs> yeah. And, but you know what? Like he doesn't get to, he, he can scream at the, like in the, in, the, in the heat of emotion, he can scream at the ref, but then mm -hmm. there's another play coming up right now. Yeah. But, and even, I mean, that's, yeah, because that's stuff that's injustice. But also, I think sometimes people get mad just because there's a defense on the field. Like, yeah. are you surprised by this? Yeah, that's a really good point. <laughs> Guess every what? Play, there's going to be a defense on, on the field every <laughs> play. I never even thought of that. And, <laughs> why, and the quarterback's like, they keep blitzing me. I don't know. I'm just trying to move this little oblong ball down the field. Yeah. But, yeah. There's a defense. Their job? It's to keep you from getting in the end zone. Right. On purpose. You accept it. <laughs> you game plan for it. And you don't yep. be surprised when they show up and they hit you in the mouth. That's their job. That's right. So I think when you have the right mindset, it also extrapolates out into patience. Mm -hmm. uh, and how to be patiently impatient, right? Which mm -hmm. sounds like yep. an oxymoron. But there's the impatient part is you just are working feverishly. 
because you know there's a lot of work to be done to advance right. your career and to do what you need to do. But you're patient because you know that it takes time to develop. It's going to take your time. It's going to take money, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to take marketing, okay? Mm -hmm. You're not going to be an artist in today's world uh, devoid of marketing and nobody's going to know about you. And if, if you, this is not a muscle that you get to avoid unless you can afford to pay somebody to do it for you, mm -hmm. or you've got somebody else on your team that can do it for you and your right. band or whatever, but it has to be addressed somehow, or you don't have any kind of viable solution to get paid to do it. Right. To right. Get yep. living at it. Um, so, uh, I mean, this seems silly, but, uh, you know, Brent, you guys can't see Brent right now, but we were joking about his hat. He's got a corn, like a yellow corn farmer's hat, but it's actually from Martha's Vineyard when he did that. Uh, the festival up there, yeah. The festival up there, yeah. So um, think about planting corn, right? Mm -hmm. When you plant corn, the farmer knows, you know, they don't just put the seeds in there, mm -hmm. rub their hands together. <laughs> Right. And sit and watch it for two days and then stomp around and get all disturbed and feel bad about themselves and think about quitting and all this stuff because they don't have corn like in two days or a week or right. two weeks or three weeks or four weeks. Right. Mm -hmm. Like there's lots of work to be done to keep that corn water, to make sure it doesn't get diseased, to, 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 to work against the defense, right. To make yeah. sure that you win the game. And, um, as silly as that sounds, I, I, I and the other thing is, by the way, you got to plant corn right? Yes. to get corn. And I think that a lot of indie artists and songwriters are, number one, they get all frustrated and, and upset and they get down on themselves and they feel like the weight of the world and they feel like they're really not good enough because they don't have corn and they never, ever planted it to begin with. Mm -hmm. Right? Maybe they bought the seeds. The seeds would be like your song. Yeah. Right? Because mm -hmm. you got to have that DNA to, right, to, yeah. to make it work. But then... You still got to get it recorded. If, if it's a songwriter, you got to get that song demo done in some form or another. Uh, and it's got to be decent, right? And, yeah. uh, and if you're an artist, you got you to record Appetite for Destruction. I mean, you got to record your masterpiece, right? You got to put that, that emotion down somehow and get it to work. And then you got to make sure people know about it, right? Yeah. Um, and I, so on one hand, I think like a lot of them never plant corn. Like, like they do zero marketing. Most artists do zero marketing and mm. are frustrated why they can't make it happen. And they get self, the, the, the worst is the self doubt, mm -hmm. the self doubt. Like, man, I don't know if it's, it's I'm not good enough. It's like, I'm well, just heard a farmer. Well, you're, you've been planting squash. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but nobody wants to buy corn. Yeah. <laughs> What's well, cause it's not corn. Yeah. It's squash. Yeah, nobody wants my corn. Dude, it's, it's zucchini. They can tell the difference. Yeah. And so, I mean, imagine the farmer like quitting after one or two weeks because the corn didn't come up because they didn't, they don't understand. Mm -hmm. They don't have the mindset of this is going to take a little while. They don't trust the process. They don't trust the process. They may not even know the process. There you go. Th there you go. Mm -hmm. So let's take another example, like lottery winners, right? We just had the big lottery. Somebody just won like, was it 1.6 billion dollars? Somebody won it. I don't even follow. Yeah. It was in, uh, they, don't, they don't say who it is, but I think it was in North Carolina or something. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody wants to win the lottery. Like how many times have I heard an artist, their biggest issue is they don't have any money. Right, yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Man, that's a mindset. Yeah. That's a mindset right there. I don't have any money, so I can't do it. Yeah. You know? um, lottery winners, I'm choosing these people because here's people who get bequeathed a crap load of money. Right? Yeah. Like it is no uh, personal vetting. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a they, scholarship. Yeah. They didn't earn it. They, they didn't just earn bought it. the right ticket. They didn't fill out an application. Yeah. Just went in there, bought two packs of cigarettes, a Mountain Dew, and give me two lottery tickets. Boom. And Change your life. You're a yeah. millionaire. You know, mm -hmm. um, there's been multiple television shows, three or four different television shows, which followed over the years, which followed lottery winners around after they won. Mm -hmm. You know what the average amount of time is for a lottery winner to be broke again? Oh, never, because they, they finally got the money. That's, going to That's all they it. needed, right? It was just the money. That's it. It'll right? Get. Guess what? It's two years. Now, it might take the $1.6 person a little like bit longer four. than that. But 
Yeah, I mean, and, and but, that much money in two years. It's like Brewster's millions. It would take a lot crazy. of work. <laughs> it would take that a much lot money. Bad and bad. I mean, people come out of the woodwork, right? Oh, yeah. Like you know, with a lot investment of investment opportunity. Yeah, all kinds yeah. of stuff. And and all of a sudden, these people who you know yesterday felt like nobody feel like all these people love me now, and and this is really cool. They're my friend. And hey, ain't you investing in self hating underwear? Like, <laughs> you put your now listen, in your underwear, and Warren it, Buffett wears them, and. Yeah. He knows. <laughs> right. So why, how does that happen? You just put these batteries next to your privates and see if you plug it in and then it. You put these batteries next to your privates. And they only blow up 12% of the time, 50% of the time. <laughs> Which is good. The people that they don't blow, don't, that don't get blowed up. Right. Uh, have some warm gen- gentles. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we better stop. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> but um, man, the reason they're typically broke, this is, this is the, the rule. The exception of the rule is the person who doesn't end up broke. Mm-hmm. Um, it's because they don't know how to handle money. Mm-hmm. They, they, don't, the mind, they don't have the mindset. They don't understand money. They don't understand. Well, let's just say they end up broke uh, again. Again, yeah. Because that's probably that's right. where they started. Most poor people are poor because they don't know how to handle money. Mm-hmm. You know? And it, 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 it's, it's a rare occasion where you know, they get bequeathed a bunch of money. They start their own business. They know exactly what they're doing. It blossoms into this amazing thing. Like they weren't taught by their parents. School doesn't teach you. The yeah. government doesn't want you to know how to handle money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, you know what I mean? Like it's the yeah. odds are against them. I'm not saying it's their fault, but they can learn. But you know what I mean? It's like, mm-hmm. but the problem is th- th- they don't understand how money works. And they, what do they do? They buy lottery tickets, which is a tax <laughs> on people who are poor at math. Like, you know, exactly. Yes. Like, like it's it's crazy, and like one guy cleared out his life savings, like thirty thousand bucks or something like that. Oh, no, I, it was like thirty five hundred dollars. Cleaned out his bank. Thirty five hundred dollars for for thirty five hundred lottery tickets. Nothing. Nothing. You know? Yeah. Um, but that's a mindset thing, like understanding how to play the game and understanding what you've got to do. Uh, is it is is it doesn't matter if you get the money or not if you don't know how to get deal with the money. You know yeah. what I mean? It doesn't mm-hmm. matter if you don't know how to play the game and market yourself as an artist. If you don't know how to, to create relationships and get, climb up the ladder on songwriting and, mm-hmm. and become a better songwriter and try to write up as much as you can and figure out ways to become an earworm and get in that person's head and, and get an op, get yourself an opportunity to mm-hmm. do that. Then um, it doesn't, you're not, you're going to have a hard time advancing as a songwriter. You're, you're not going to find an audience as an artist, you know, yeah. and I, uh, I have an interesting story about this. Well, I just did a, a recent know the row event with yeah. uh, Lindsay and yes. this is not part that uh, is out there publicly, but he, he talked about, you know, so for the people in, in the group, he's talked about this writer that he knew that actually came to town with like a number one hit, like oh. moved to town. Got, it got cut. Number one, like came to town with that legit. It was a hit. And he's like, it basically it ruined him. It ruined him because the guy was in town for about three years and went home because it didn't work out for him because he was under the false impression that now he knows how to write hits and do that consistently. He came down with one, but he didn't have a you know, call going to college, yeah. have all that and being beat up and humbled. And so he's like, hey, this guy was in the room with people who had more than one hit. You know, he had one, but he was like, hey, when I wrote my hit, this is how I did it. But yeah. that's not how you do it. And so he wasn't a good collaborator because he thought he knew everything because sure enough, he rolled into town with the number one. And yeah, he's got a mindset of, that doesn't include humility. He right? d- right. hadn't earned the humility yet because he rolled in on top. Yeah. And, it, and he gone. He washed he out. Gone. He gone. He gone. Ryan Leaf, yeah. like the biggest, biggest NFL number one draft pick quarterback bust in the history of the game. Yeah. You know, rolled in, number one draft pick, got a $10 million um, – Friggin' guaranteed contract and mm-hmm. never play one game. Quit. Yeah. Now he gets drunk, yelling at people in bars in Oregon, going, "I'm I'm Ryan Leaf. I was drafted number one, and nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody yeah. cares how much money he has. A jerk, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's a mindset thing, right? Like, so Mark Bray is one of our artists right now. Um, Mark Bray lives with his wife in a small apartment. They got a brand new baby, their first baby. Aww. Mark Bray does probably about maybe 80 shows a year, mm-hmm. 70, 80 shows a year with his band. And uh, what he doesn't make doing that 
he bartends at a bowling alley on the side mm-hmm. uh, to uh, to make to make ends meet. And Mark's wife is, I believe, like a teacher. Um, mm-hmm. she, she makes like around you know forty grand a year. My dad, uh, yeah, kind of like educational thing, right? They don't have any money. They don't have money to the kind of money that it's going to take to advance Mark's career. Yeah, they don't have huge radio promo. Let's go get you. Right. Yeah. So, but did that stop Mark? His mindset is of humility and of work, and I got to do this. So they work, they work. He's playing, he's playing, he's playing, he's playing, and he's a compelling artist. He's good. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a great mm-hmm. singer, killer from it. Big personality, man. Like, mm-hmm. big personality. And um, lo and behold, a year and a half ago, like, a bunch of people or regular fans came up and said, hey, Mark, we've been talking, and we got six people together. We all want to get together and invest in you. And it wasn't a lot of money in terms of the music industry. They each mm-hmm. put in $11,000. Wow. So Mark had 66 grand, right? Yeah. Now, Mark right off the bat knows, I don't know what to do with this, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mark, man. So, so he comes to I'm Randy. I'm make a video. And bar for, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, so again, like <laughs> if you, you just win the lottery and this happens like so much. This is why I'm talking about this. Like, it, it, like Mark comes to us, okay? Mm-hmm. And was, what can we do with this? And so we put out a plan. Here's the best spend of the money. Here's what we can do. We moved the needle so much in, the, in that 12 months for him mm-hmm. that a bigger investor came in. Another guy goes out to see him regularly and says, man, I saw what you did with that 66 grand. I knew you did that. I love what you're doing. I lo- he loves his attitude, the humility, mm-hmm. the mindset, right? Because mm-hmm. um, a person with a mindset, a proper mindset, recognizes another person with a mindset, right? Yeah. Now, let's, let's go back to that. Like, let's say you're a farmer and your next door neighbor just bought, bought a farm mm-hmm. and is out there planting the seeds and watering it and then sitting there looking at them. Right. I mean, or, you just look like this guy's an idiot. Or every right? week goes and digs it up, see what's, what's going yeah, see, on. Coming, yeah, jumping up and down, complaining all the time at the local grocery store. Man, my corn ain't coming up. Like, it's taking forever. Yeah. And, and everybody just, but the people who know the process of corn, just look at them like, Oh, uh, you fool, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. No, it did. Now, depending on what kind of attitude you have, you're either going to be judging him or you're going to be mm-hmm. like, oh, just hang in there, buddy. It's going to work out. But even then, in the, unless his mindset changes, that compassion doesn't amount to hill beans, does it? Right. No, at all. No. Um, so this is, you see the point. So, so this guy comes to Mark. So what, what, what could you do with 250 grand? You know, mm-hmm. today, they're at the bank, open up a bank account. The contracts have all been signed. That's that awesome. Money's going to be in place today. Okay. He didn't have a dime. Did money get in his way? Did he have the no. mindset that I don't have money, so here's why I can't do this? No. Um, he, did what, he did what he could do with what he had, where he was. Yeah. Right? Now, on the other hand, I get artists that come in that are um, blessed. You know, they've got an investor already. Maybe it's mm-hmm. their parents or something like that. Yeah. And they're spending, I mean, like lots of money like six figures, one hundred, two hundred thousand dollars $200,000 trying to, trying to make this thing happen. But to your point, like of that songwriter story, mm-hmm. like they think they know. Yeah. So they're blowing it on stuff. that's not working for them. You know, mm-hmm. their sixth secondary radio single. Yeah. He's trying to get above 50. Okay. What happens if you do that? You know, you're, you're, you're number 27 mm-hmm. plus Two dollars and fifty one cents gonna get you a cup of coffee. Like who's your audience? Who heard the song? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. They they don't understand, right? So yeah. there's plenty of people with money that have what you think you want that can't make it happen. Right. Because they get the wrong mindset. They think yeah. they know. And they don't know. Uh, they don't know, right? Um, so this is this is what I want to talk about. I mean, guys, you you need you need to market. If your mindset is that you can't market. And you're just waiting for, I don't know, like the marketing fairy to fly into your window and mm-hmm. magically press a button and uh, do the marketing for you for nothing. It's not going to happen. Oh my you know? gosh. But this makes me think my buddy, James Dupre. Okay. Yeah. Um, at home in Bioshiku, Louisiana, where they make slap your mama, you know, <laughs> <laughs> love that by the way. That's good stuff. <laughs> And uh, or it's right over by there. Anyway, so what what is he doing? You know, he's driving an ambulance, whatever. He's got like four kids. Yep. He's going and doing cover songs on YouTube consistently. And he sings like a, I call him vocal panther. He's such yeah. a great singer. Yeah. And he's doing these cover songs. He's in the voice, doing, right? Uh, yeah, we're getting to that. He did oh, all okay. these cover songs, all these cover songs. And, 
And then eventually, um, he was on the Ellen show because they found him online because he'd done enough and he does great work. And they put him on friggin' Ellen and he got to play, play to cover on Ellen. Met some people from Warner Brothers. Next thing I know, because I know, because he cut one of my songs on a on an indie project, because stuff got started getting passed around, and some legit like producers started getting interested. They cut some songs on him, and one of them was mine. So that's how I discovered him. Oh, and boy. then he, yeah, then he's on Ellen. Then he's on Warner Brothers Records. And then um, you know that that deal didn't shake out. And then he's but he's off that. And then he's on the Voice, yeah. you know, and and doing that thing. But it all started with that YouTube. How much does that cost? Yeah, nothing. His guitar, and I'm. Do you know how many mindset? A fancy curves? mic. It was just I'm doing this. This gets my stuff out, and there are other things he could have been doing too. That you know could have poured gasoline on that. But he, are you talking Didn't about money? Oh, no, just cheap. What does the Joker says? Well, it's gasoline or cheap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you <know>? that's right. <laughs> but you know he did the stuff, and it he did great work, and word started getting out, and he was patient. You know? Yeah. And, and he's kept working, right? Kept he, working. Yeah. I mean, man, that's it. Like, I mean, the, 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 some of the discovery uh, methods that we've done um, through social media and through the, the Facebook program that, that or not Facebook, uh, YouTube uh, strategy that we invoke with the artists who are willing to play it um, mm-hmm. was created. We just found out now uh, 22 at bats or opportunities for national television shows for our artists and three of them now it used to be two now it's three as of two days ago mm-hmm. um our Kylie Fry just was a former artist uh, I saw that, yeah. and, and she got on a tv show that whole thing started with us like that mm-hmm. those producers she was introduced to by us you know yeah so now three artists have gotten on tv that's 30 percent no that's 15 percent that's a 15 percent ratio that's pretty mm-hmm. sick man and um you know how many artists we have that just like won't do covers? <laughs> yeah. Can't find the time. You know, yeah. I don't have the time. I don't have like, I don't believe in, I don't know. Like I don't want to be known as a cover artist, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Uh, well, the Beatles first record was a cover record, you know, first yeah. two stones record covers, first Led Zeppelin record covers. We know Miranda Lambert, Carrie Underwood, um, Chris Young, because they came into our awareness singing covers on Nashville star. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, or American Idol, mm-hmm. um, you know, Ray Lynn covers, mm-hmm. um, these, man, it's, that's a cheap way to do it. You know, Heck yeah, that's Living an inexpensive Russell. way to do it. Make it happen. Get somebody, get somebody to freaking love you. How, Justin Bieber ah! <laughs> covers nine, <laughs> yeah. nine years old singing covers, you know, mm-hmm. you can't yeah, get is even getting a nat bad on a TV show. That's just what, what is that? It's another lottery ticket. You still because we've seen way more people flame out and, and do nothing with that, right? Yep. The, their version of Go Broke two years later only mm-hmm. didn't even take them two years to, to slide back into obscurity. Yeah. I mean, it's not enough. That TV show's not going to be enough. You know, it, right. it, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to certainly grow your audience. But if you're not taking care of that and, and being intelligent about it and saying, okay, no, first of all, knowing that you don't know, yeah. Right? Like, what don't I know here? Um, and, and, and going out and reaching out to people and saying, well, ha- like, how come this happened or that happened? And, uh, you know, you can, you can connect with the hashtags, right? The people mm-hmm. that are like hashtag uh, Dupree. Team Wilkes. Yeah, Wilkes. Team Wilkes. You know, yeah. there's 17,000 for Wilkes, man. 17,000 mm-hmm. hashtags for Wilkes. That's 17,000 people that raised their hand and said, I love this guy. Right? Yeah. He just needs 1,000 of them to spend 100 bucks a year. He's got a business. Heck yeah. You know, he's not a rich well, man, but he's got cash flow. You know, <laughs> exactly. Well, it's like, you know, the mindset of like, I'm going to get on this TV show and I'm going to kick butt. It's not enough to kick butt. You got to kick butt and take names. Yeah. yeah and exactly. <laughs> That's, right. That's right, man. And it's the mindset, like, you know, education. Like, do you look at your marketing? Because if you don't have any money at all, then you've got to spend time, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How much time is, is that an expense for you? To, to market or is it a an investment when you when uh brent when you first started songwriting pro mm-hmm. i mean you didn't know what the hell you were doing no heck no no you, know, I mean, you, you a- weren't some web guru guy that had 50 other businesses and then just decided to sprinkle some magic brent dust on this one and make it blow up like what did you do well i started getting educated mm-hmm. a lot of podcasts that kind of stuff learning about 
blogging and all that kind of stuff and kind of content marketing and got in there and started figuring it out. Nobody read those first ones and that's fine. Yeah. They discover them later. It doesn't matter. And just getting in there and yeah, you'd hit, you'd hit, uh, you know, there'd be things like, Oh, inside little things like, okay, start off with a, um, WordPress hosting WordPress site. Well, there's more stuff you can do with the self-hosted, but that takes you know, a certain amount of technical skill to kind of migrate that over. And also it's more expensive, right? And so what I said, well, I'm going to basically work on this free platform, get my chops up, get some momentum going, earn my way into that next level. Right. Once I get a little bit of like, oh, okay, yeah, there's snowball starting to roll. And then, so I'm not stopped at the very front end by all the technical stuff I don't know. Yeah. You know, not the analysis paralysis. Yeah. And then it hit a point like, okay, it's, I'm ready to make that jump. Okay. You know, th- uh, let's feed this thing some more, you know? Right. And now, it, all, the, all the while, first of all, you're investing a ton of time, but mm-hmm. you got a full time job. Yeah. So you're doing this mm-hmm. from like eight till two in the morning, essentially. That kind of stuff. Yeah. Kids go to bed and you're doing that for a number of years. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Until, and then, and then the next big step. So you made the big, one big jump going from the WordPress hosted site over to your own hosted site. Where right. It's, you got to have a better game. You got to know what you're doing a little bit more. Yeah. A lot more stuff can go wrong and you don't have anybody to turn to, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you're I don't like, know this stuff. You're the guy. Yeah. My peeps don't know this stuff. Yeah. So then what? <sighs> you know, another big step was podcast. Yeah. You know, these things we started doing and then um, acquiring the Freddie site, which came to me, which was an answered prayer. I didn't even know to ask for. And, and so you just, just taking these steps taking these steps one little thing at a time. What did it all start with? It started with one blog like five yeah. years ago or something about yep. hitting a bullseye with your songwriting and no readership, <laughs> you know, and it just grows and grows. And now heck the podcast has over 150,000 downloads. Yeah. Just yeah. that. And how many views is the blog, you know, and, and what, and this is a big part of what feeds my family at this yeah. point. Yeah. No day job. I mean, and that, 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 like you just recently had your anniversary from leaving that day job, like in yeah. the last week or two. Mm-hmm. So another big thing, but you see, it's like, you're not going to figure it all out in advance. You know, you're not. And, and the mindset is you got to have faith in yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got to know that you don't know. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and you got to know that you don't know and ask and, and go and figure out how to f- find out, you know, find out everything you can um, on, for free online yeah. podcasts, stuff like that. And then, and then mess around with it. And then, you know what, you're, at some point you're probably going to end up spending a little bit of money, yeah. right? To, mm-hmm. to get a, a better education from somebody who can give you some details at that point. And, um, and then the, uh, and, and then it escalates from there. You know, I just had a, I just had a, um, I just had a, a, a long meeting phone conversation last night with actually a climber had hooked me up with a potential client. Nice. Um, she got a cut with him. I think it's on the Texas charts or something. Cool. And, and she's like, man, he needs to talk to you. And, and we talked and he asked one really, really important question in that conference call. It was like two hours. We were talking just mm-hmm. about the way it used to be and what we're doing now. And does that make sense? And he was like, this makes so much sense, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, and he's like, man, Johnny, how do you determine who you want to work with? Mm-hmm. Do you know what my number one determination is? What? <laughs> mindset. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, mindset, man. I, I don't care if you got $100,000 or $200,000 or a million dollars of budget that you can bring to my company. If you don't have the mindset, mm-hmm. that, uh, you're not buying into what we're doing. You, you're taking away my very precious time and bandwidth mm-hmm. from the other artists who do believe it. Right. Yeah. Well, and, you're going to have for one thing. You've run into that. Yeah. From talking, I know. And fight, you know, fighting, whatever. But yep. with your clients, people that are paying you <laughs> to yeah. try and get them to play in the sandbox and do yeah. what they're paying you to do. Right. Yeah. Help me help you. Right. You're already paying me. Like, <laughs> they have to be an active participant. They yeah. have to play along. Right. And you're going to get better results off the person that comes in with almost no budget than but has the right mindset and work yep. ethic than you are with somebody that comes in with a ton of budget and doesn't have the right mindset or the right work ethic exactly and it's there's a lot, a lot of, it's gonna be a lot more enjoyable 
and profitable long term. That's right. You're going to grow that person into someone who has a big budget because they're going to earn their way up it because it works. That's right. And, you know, there, there's a while back we were talking about um, IQ and EQ and, and how mm-hmm. like uh, once once somebody has like a bottom line IQ of like 120, mm-hmm. because below that you're like you're forced. Here's remedial. normal. Here's yeah. forced. Yeah. Yeah. But once <laughs> you get above like 120, like there's no difference that's attributed directly to IQ between uh, in success, right? Mm -hmm. Between somebody that's got a 165 IQ like uh, Einstein or somebody with a 120. Like at that point, you're smart enough Mm -hmm. and then it's mindset. Yeah. And then it turns into mindset. There is like two two of the the top two rated IQs in the country. One guy runs a multi-billion dollar company and the other guy straight up is a bouncer in Montana. <laughs> who who is who like in his spare time is disproved straight up disproved the Pythagorean theorem but can't get it together you know and and some of that's environmental for him he had a really really hard time growing up a really mm-hmm. really rough life but he can't figure out how to get around it as smart as he is wow doesn't matter his mindset sucks nobody wants to work with him so he's got a, a job that for a guy with like a 200 IQ I mean like he should be freaking in a think tank for the government he's yeah. not you know, he's not, he's not that guy. He should be never thinking about money and how to pay the bills, but every week he's got to figure out how to pay those bills. Wow. And what's he going to do? So uh, I attribute this to the same thing with talent, right? Mm-hmm. Like, am I blown away by somebody with like amazing freaking talent? Am I moved by that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Does that yeah. get my attention? Absolutely. But then if I talk to them and they got a crappy mindset, mm-hmm. not interested. And yeah. it's a disappointment but I'm not going to touch that with a 10 foot pole. Yeah. You know? And uh, so again, just talented enough, right? Mm-hmm. With the mindset of, man, we know we got to work. We're going to, you know, the, the lonely highway boys are like the poster child for the right mindset. Those guys mm-hmm. just a month ago moved up from Jacksonville, Florida. Everything we tell them to do, they do, mm-hmm. you know, like, Hey, you need to post some more stuff. Like we're, we're handling their, their Instagram posts, but we need some more stuff from in the band. Like mm-hmm. you guys got to handle that starting tomorrow. Boom. There it is. Yeah. Like you got to do this. You got to do that. We're plugging them into Broadway, you know? And, mm-hmm. and by the way, so they've been doing like probably they've been playing together for seven years as a band. Um, they probably do down in Jacksonville. They're probably doing like 70 shows a year, maybe 80 shows a year mm-hmm. uh, on their own. And now they're up on Broadway. They just did like nine shows straight. <laughs> yeah. Right. Completely different band. Huh? You know what I mean? And, yeah. but they had to move, right? Mm-hmm. They got, one has got family, you know, yeah. two kids and a wife and, and say, I got to do this. This is what we got to do. You know, if we're going to do this, this is what's going to happen. And are we moving the needle? Yeah. Are we making progress? Yep. But mm-hmm. they have the, every, they're grateful for everything, right? Mm-hmm. They drink like fishes, man. Like, I can't, <laughs> like they totally, they're, they're an outlaw brand for sure. Yeah. But you know, the, thank you, man. You know, the, they'll go out of their way to walk across the room. Thank somebody. If they got a round of beers up on stage, somebody bought it for them. Then every single one of them does it. Like it's, it's insane, awesome. yeah. but it's a good, but it's the mindset that keeps them going. Right. Mm-hmm. And that makes us so want to work with them so bad. Yeah. And on top of that, they're insanely talented, you know? So luck, there's the, there's the, the lightning in the bottle. Yeah. You know, cause they're willing to participate. And uh, so man, that, that's it guys. It really is mindset. Like the how to, the, the, if there's no such thing as that one roadmap, that one magic formula that works right. for everybody that doesn't exist. But even if it did, it wouldn't matter mm-hmm. if you had it in your hand and you didn't have the mindset. Right. Right. Like getting the golden ticket from Willy Wonka. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're creating 50 reasons why you can't get to the train station to make it down to the yeah. Wonka factory. <laughs> then you'll get in. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, it, it's, it's just that simple, guys. So what's your mindset? You know, what's standing in your way? How come you haven't grown your audience? Do you not know? Do you not know that you don't know? Uh, or do you do know you're not spending the time? Are you, you know, you have money for new guitars. You have money for, you know, booze. You have money for your significant other. You have money for dates. You have money for a new car. You have money for, you know, weed. You got, you got, you got money. Mm-hmm. What, are you spending any of it on marketing at all? Are you just worried about how you're going to record that next song that nobody's going to hear? Right. 
God bless you. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean it's bad. I mean, I'm assuming here, I'm talking to all the artists with competitive product, you know, like competitive yeah. art. But guys, you got to do this, man. So that's all I had to say about that. I just really want to drive that home. It, it, it's, this is across that, that FB Live thing that I went to, which just started this whole conversation and got me thinking about this, was, had nothing to do with the music industry at all. Mm -hmm. Nobody in there, I was the only guy in the music industry, really. Actually, yeah. there's one other guy. There's one other guy. But um, everybody else is like, S selling products, working for an ad agency, mm -hmm. trying to get clients on to help like chiropractors and doctors and all these different people improve their businesses. Yeah. Like, had nothing to do with the music industry. Guess yeah. what? Same issues, same speed bumps, same potholes, same mental roadblocks that we all have. Yeah. And you ain't going to get around them without the mindset. And then, and only then will the, the, the know-how and the how-to and the different roadmaps start to make sense to you. Confucius said that when the teacher's ready, the or when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Mm -hmm. But so many of you never get that teacher, you never get that break because you're not ready yet. Yeah. And the reason you're not ready is you got a crabby mindset. So straighten up, all right? <laughs> we want you to win, guys. So listen, once again, join the client community if you haven't done so. Leave a five-star rating and review. Share it with somebody. Make sure that uh, if it's working for you, it can work for somebody else. And subscribe to the podcast. Make sure those come in there every single, like twice a week, man. Get right into your player there. This podcast exists because we want you to win. So keep on climbing. And we'll see you at the top.